Amen, amen. Get this. PowerPoint started in a second. There we go. Our manner of conversation. This is part two. I just want to re read the first verse that I read of our text. 1 Peter 1 15 says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. And I'm speaking today about our manner of conversation. You see, when we come calling on the Lord, it's important to realize what kind of frame of mind we're in when we call on Him. I want to read from Romans 10, chapter 10, verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law of righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ of Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord of over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, I was thinking this last week. How wonderful it would be to be Hebrew, to be a Jew, to be an actual child of Abraham. And the reason I say that, because I love the stories of Abraham. And when Abraham got up on that mountain, after that he had won the battle for Lot when he had got taken captive, and he had met Melchizedek, the king of Salem, he went up on that mountaintop to talk to God, and God said, I'm going to be your exceeding great reward. I got saved when I was six years old. A lot of times of ups and downs since then. But I'm going to tell you something, God's been precious to me. And I was praying one day, and I'm not trying to act like I'm the only one ever prayed. I know I'm not the only one ever stumbled and fell. And I know I'm not God's last word of a righteous, never failed man. But I know that I prayed. I was praying at 5.30 in the morning at the Church of God in Arcadia. And I'd pray for an hour. Then I'd go to church and oh, what a blessing time I had. And one morning in prayer, God spoke to me and said, I'm going to be your exceeding great reward. I got so excited. I shouted. I ran around the church praising God. But the thrill of that in my heart, that him speaking that to me, just like he spoke to Abraham, but now Abraham, he spoke to an audible voice. I just could hear it in my mind. But I still felt very special and I got to thinking the other day what it had been to have been a son of Abraham and God spoke to me and said, you are. And I kept reading the scripture that kept saying, we are Jews who are not born a Jew, 
but are a Jew of the heart. In other words, we're a child of that same promise. When we accept Christ, and Christ loves us so much that he gave himself for us, so that we start knocking on heaven's door and calling on Jesus and God the Father through Jesus Christ is so precious to God that through Jesus Christ, he's rich unto all that call on him. And the more I thought about how it is that God looks on me, how important it was that I look on him in a right manner. And I got to thinking, I'm talking to the King of Kings. I'm talking to the Lord of Lords. Much better than talking to the President of the United States. Much better than call, talking to the Secretary General of the United Nations. Much better than to have a powwow with all the kings of the world. I'm talking to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. I was outside praying a while ago in the dark, loving to lift up my hands and watching that sun rise. And I get to thinking about the Lord rising with healing in his wings, the son of righteousness in Malachi 4, where it talks him rising with healing in his wings. And I'm thinking, you know, it's going to be wonderful when I get healed, when God heals these legs so I can take off and shout and run and enjoy the presence of God. And I, telling you, I had a time. I promised y'all that I had set a goal at New Year's. It was not a New Year's resolution. It was a goal to read through the Bible ten times. And I'm not bragging on myself. I'm just telling you what this has done for me. I'm on my 10th time already. Since Christmas, I'm on my 10th time to be able to say that. You don't know how that makes me feel. But when you read the Bible so much that the stories, you're seeing them come before you get to them. And you know the word is coming alive. It does something to the inside of your being in a relationship to God. And this is what I'm talking about. When we're calling on Him, we need to realize how rich He is to all that call upon Him. I would encourage you to read your Bible. Now you probably can't read it like I got it. Now I'm a different sort of fella. I have a different calling on my life. That's why I'm enjoying preaching up here every Sunday morning. I love this church. I love the freedom I feel. Why? Because God is rich on me. He's looking down on me. He's rich unto all that call on his name. And since 2.30 this morning, I've been awake. And since 4 o'clock this morning, I've been putting his word into my heart and into my life, and I've been reaching out to others across the internet, and I've been talking to God through the heavens. I've been looking up into the throne of God. Now, I can't see him with my natural eye, but I'm going to tell you something. I know I made touch with heaven this morning. You can do that too. It's all about the manner of conversation we have with God. Now, this is no big I and little you up here. I know I'm elevated above you. That's so I can make eye contact. That's not for making myself above the crowd. I didn't do that for that. I want to see you and I want to make eye contact. I want you to know that it's my heart reaching out to your heart. And I'm trying to tell you, if you'll take notice of the manner of conversation you have. Oh, hallelujah. If you'll take notice of the way you talk to God and the kind of respect you have for Him and the kind of love you have for Him. 
and how much love he has for you. You see, he's rich unto all that call on his name. Now let's look at this thing where it says, A heart of a man, with the heart of man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This morning, if your heart is believing on Jesus Christ and that God raised him from the dead, and if your mouth will confess to him how much you love him and trust him and repent of any sins, repent of sins if you might not know. Oh God, keep me from that presumptuous sin or that hidden sin that I'm not aware of. If you'll just come before him with humility, a broken and contrite spirit, he will accept. That's the manner we have to go to God in, in humility. And we call on his name. It doesn't matter that we're in wheelchairs or power chairs, or if we're walking with a walker, or walking on our two good feet. He's rich unto all that call on his name. Now this is the end of our second segment. Brother Johnny, if you want to sing, that's fine. If you don't, I'll play a song. It's up to you. Okay, go ahead and play one. All right. Let me get it started. I've got to first turn off the video. Got so excited about not my stylus out of whack, but.